Hi everyone. So I'm Dr. Diksha Pandey, additional professor in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, KMC Manipal, and I'm also in charge of Urogynecology subdivision in our department. Today we are we have you know that we have started a series on instruments which we discuss outside the OT with some surgical tips and tricks of the procedure. So today we have a very interesting procedure to discuss, and that procedure is sacrospinous fixation. We'll discuss the indications, we'll discuss the procedure, we'll discuss the instruments and suture material, everything with, uh, with you today. And for that, I have with me Dr. Mrabila, who is a second year postgraduate in our department. Okay. So, um, from where do you want to start? You have kept all the instruments. But before that, I want to ask you one question. How do you choose a patient? What are the indications of sacrospinous fixation? First, indications for sacrospinous fixations are first is wall prolapse and when we are doing uh, uh, wall closure for vaginal hysterectomy patients, mm -hmm. if the uh, vault is near to the introitus, we need to close it prophylactically so that the patient won't come to us uh, with wall prolapse later. So um, there are two indications what Mridula is trying to say that one is Treatment, therapeutic. When a patient comes for, with wall prolapse, this is a very good technique to reduce, to fix the wall sacrospinous, which can be done vaginally. There is no abdominal opening, no abdominal complication. So for many cases, and it has a very good success rate, up to 90% success rate. So one indication is therapeutic indication. The other indication, what Mridula said, is profile examination. So when do we do profile access? In two cases again. Yes, First is when on examination only the patient is having complete uh, eversion uh, of the vagina. Okay, full vagina is diverted out, better to fix it and one very good method of fixing is sacrospinous fixation. The other indication, if you have not planned it before also and your hysterectomy and repairs, everything is over, still you see, many cases you would have seen that vault is still at the introitus, it has not gone up. So if after performing the entire procedure you feel that vault is still at the introitus, you have to, you must do a prophylactic sacrospinous fixation as you said to prevent vault collapse later. Okay. So uh, we'll go step by step to discuss the surgical procedure. Meanwhile we'll be discussing the instruments and whatever is required, suture material, we'll discuss. So Mrithila, if you have to do a uh, uh, sacrospinous suspension you are planning, where do you give the incision? And it is suppose a case of wall prolapse. The technique is exactly the same for wall prolapse as well as for prophylactic suspension, except for one or two things. Okay. So what is the first thing? First thing, ma'am. First, we have to uh, assess the wall. We have to open, uh, see the wall, and then we have to put two identification sutures at the first. After putting identification sutures, because later we won't know where we have started, and mm -hmm. all the uh, vagina becomes. Uh, and not make any disturbance. So, so uh, how do you assess the vault? You take the vault out when the patient is under anesthesia, and then you will be able to see dimples. Okay, one line kind of thing, which is the heel scar of previous surgery, and then two dimples on the side. So, how do you hold it, Mudula? You hold it with Alice forceps. Two Alice forceps. Two Alice forceps, and then we put two identification sutures both sides, yes. and then we lift them so that we so can what see material, what suture material you use for? Um, we this use two zero, identification. Two zero vicryl we use for identification sutures. Any vicryl, you should not use silk or non-absorbable because it will remain yeah. there. Okay, you don't have to cut it later. You are putting it inside the vagina. So whatever suture material you have, absorbable, sutures. absorbable suture material, you can put two identification sutures, sutures. at one. Right. Then, then after that we lift. Uh, we lift the identification suture ends with right. the uh, Alice forceps, and then we can see the posterior wall of the mm -hmm. vagina. And then it, we have to divide it into three parts. Very First good. is upper one third, middle one third, and the lower one third. So upper one third will be directly will enter into the peritoneum, mm -hmm. and lower one third so pouch, of, pouch of Douglas. That is the entry. So if you deposit the prolapse back, right. what actually you are seeing here, yeah. you call upper one third. If you deposit it back like that, you have to understand in your mind the anatomy. Anatomy is totally distorted in prolapse cases. So you have to do a lot of imagination. So if we put it up, what you are saying upper, upper one third, third is that actually going to the peritoneum, that is pouch of Douglas we go. So uh, and the lower one third is near to the rectum. So yes. we have to be very careful. Hmm. And in the, uh, the middle one third is a is the place where we actually uh, give the incision. Very good. That's perfect. So 
This incision is very important if you don't give, either you will enter the rectum or you will open the pouch of pelvis, which we don't want. Because the one advantage of doing sacrospinous fixation as compared to any other abdominal procedure, we say that it is totally an extra pectoral. Okay, so the risk of complication is much less. Okay. So middle one third, when you give incision, how do you give incision? Uh, we can give with uh, first we have to uh, hydro to get the plane of the incision we have to uh, do hydro dissection with uh, adrenaline and which uh, two ml of one ml of adrenaline we will mix in saline mm. and then uh, uh, we will take 10 ml 10 cc serine and 10 ml of adrenaline in saline diluted adrenaline Dil yes. diluted adrenaline and how much you dilute this is one one in one ml in 200 ml uh, ns we dilute mm. And we take 10 cc of that and we start uh, doing hydro dissection to get the planes and also to decrease the bleeding. So here um, one thing, this all these comes through experience, I think nobody can teach you, you have to die to understand that. So usually um, sacrospinous fixation we do bilateral or unilateral? Unilateral we do. Unilateral. So this is again one experience I want to share. So once I thought that a long time ago, I started thinking that when unilateral is so good, bilateral will be more uh, a more uh, a durable procedure. So why not do uh, uh, this bilateral suspension? So for a few cases, I did bilateral uh, sacrospinous fixation. And what happened in that day, I would have told you the story, that what happened, those all out of three patients done very in that uh, two to three months, two of them came with severe urinary incontinence, okay, stress urinary incontinence, de novo. So what they were saying that what they're feeling was that even what left without this leak, severe leak was better for them. So then I thought why it happened, this is what I'm understanding, I understood that time that maybe when you do bilateral, you are taking the tissue from the vagina and actually you are expanding the vagina, you are stretching the vagina. When this vagina is stretched, urethra is just beneath it. So urethra neck also gets stretched. So patient doesn't have the tone. That it becomes a fixed vagina and patient starts de novo, stress urinary incontinence. After since then, I have not done the three, four cases I did. That was long time ago, seven, eight years ago. After that, I'm just doing, uh, most of us just do a unilateral uh, sacrospinous fixation. I read some literature also. If you're doing bilateral, it's better to put a patient free vaginal tape also because the risk of stress urinary incontinence in those women where you are fixing bilateral sacrospinous ligament is much higher. Okay, so uh, we do unilateral and we do which side? Most towards the right side. Right, right side. side. Okay, yes. right, right side because left side rectum is there, rectum sigmo sigmoid, sigmoid colon is there, and our hand also, it's easy, easy. to do it on the right side of the patient. So, so you have infiltrated, so infiltration on, so angle of infiltration is towards right because we have to, we don't want to unnecessarily fill in the center or on the right side. Right? So you do tend to have, this important thing, what I forgot to tell you. So initially when I was doing the sacrospinous fixation, I thought if you feel a lot of adrenaline, diluted adrenaline, you will get a good thing. That's what happens in most of the places, but not here. So I suggest that don't put more than 30, 35 or 40 ml there because when you put a lot of 40, 50, 60 ml of uh, solution this side, the retraction of rectum becomes very difficult, okay? Because there is already one bubble, one rectum is there which you want to retract. On top of that, you are creating a bubble of safety and the space is very limited here. So when you are trying to retract, that bubble starts uh, hindering the retraction. So don't put it on. I think 20 to up to 30 ml hydro dissection in this space is more than enough what we need. Don't be over enthusiastic that bleeding. You want to prevent bleeding. You inject a lot of adrenaline and then what happens if you don't get space to work on. Okay. You have given adrenaline for hydro dissection. Now what next? And then we can use monopolar cautery mm -hmm. and uh, start the, mm -hmm. this is the monopolar cautery which we use. Mm -hmm. And we then we dissect the middle one third. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then now uh, with two alleys for uh, forceps, we have to hold the edges of the uh, okay, so these are the alleys forceps. Alice mm -hmm. forceps, and then with the alleys forceps, we will ho hold the edges of the vagina. And uh, with our finger, very slowly, we need to get the plane. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, so, you can use some sharp scissors, sharp scissors also initially. 
because whenever you give incision, whether it is mid-urethral incision for TVTO, whether it is cystocele, you are dissecting, initially little fibers, you have to cut with scissors, sharp scissors to get into play. Then you can advance say to blend dissection. Blend dissection with the finger. Yeah. You said that you want to give incision with uh, monopolar cautery. Do you have any other instrument if you don't have mono, by just monopolar cautery, it's not working that way. <laughs> so we can use, use uh, a long handle uh, blade yeah. and uh, BP handle and a blade of 23 size blade we can use. Yes, because it is not a stab wound, it will be around 3 to 4 centimeters long incision, around 3 centimeters long incision. Okay, then you bluntly dissect the area. And which area we are entering? Uh, pararectal area we enter. Pararectal fossa. fossa. So we will get a lot of fat we expect. And when you go there, now the pararectal area is open. How do you know that how much tissue you have to remove, where do you want to reach? What is the landmark in pararectal? You have dissected a little bit, everything is like most of the time you see all fat there, but you have to reach somewhere. So you have to check the landmark, how far you have done that landmark. And what is that landmark? Ischial spine we yes. have to check for. So how do you check ischial spine? Finger, we use your finger, index finger and then uh, we check for the ischial spine. It will be on the side ball. We will show everything in the dummy later. But you have to go inside the vagina and look for, for the ischial, ischial spine. spine. And immediately if you sweep your finger you will get pararectal space and, uh, and we get the uh, sacrospinous ligament. ligament. Okay. But this you are just feeling. To put the suture, put yes. two sutures there, you need to see the space. Yes. So how do you do that? One, you will keep on cleaning the flat. You know that you have to go to sacrospinous ligament because below that is which muscle? Sacrospinous yes. ligament is upper border of coccygeus. Coccygeus. So many people, when they try, um, I have seen also that many people say sacrospinous, but they go to coccygeus muscle. Okay. Actually, to tell you the truth, that is not the wrong way. That is not entirely the wrong. But definitely the grip is better with sacrospinous fixation. Okay. If some cases you are not able to reach somehow, at least you go to coccygeus muscle and take a bite from that. Okay. Then, so then we have to visualize the space yes. uh, to uh, see the muscle properly, to okay. see the ligament properly and then take the bite. So for that we have to use uh, uh, long handle, long blades we have to use to properly retract. Minimum three blades we need yes. for retracting. Uh, Minimum three, I feel three are enough. enough. Three is ideal and three is enough. It won't go in two, you won't have space for four. Space. Okay, so three long bladed. So this what Medulla has got is the perfect kind of, it is actually a long bladed retractor. We have some other retractors also but they are they are being used in OT. So we just got to show some speculum. Usually some speculum won't fit here. You get, uh, you need a single blade because it should not get stuck. And three this kind of retractors you need to retract the space. And what are they retracting actually? So one, one blade okay should be always be parallel to the sacrospinous ligament okay and two others one should separate the rectum here and the other structures bladder and the upper part of bubble will be separated with other blade other okay so we are just next to the rectum in the pedicle space so two things are important here one thing that you have to clean the fat to visualize you have to enter that tissue and remove all extra tissue from there with your dissection in dissection we can do with very good fat removing dissection we can do with oh, suction. With suction. With suction. suction. Show that suction also. Yeah. Yeah. So this kind of suction, suction tube, tube. This tube you take, I put a tip on that and just clean it. It is a very good way of. Other thing what else we can use Madhula? Mm -hmm. We can use 4x4. 4x4 uh, four four. Uh, four four won't go there. Okay, your finger won't. Like my finger, if you have a very long finger then okay. Usually I find it difficult to every time go and clean. And then this hand starts obstructing. Okay. okay. So what can you use? We can you use a uh, peanut. Oh, we can use. Yes. So how do you make a peanut? Peanut uh, with four by four uh, gauze piece. We have to make a small peanut uh, shaped roll yeah. and then put it onto the sp sponge holding forceps and just clean and then it clean. It. So okay, these two are very good method of cleaning. So after some time, you will be able to see the entire ligament. Actually, that is a must. If you are doing sacrospinous, you have to see almost entire ligament. It's just it's spine, just spine to, to sacrum. sacrum. You have to see, visualize it. Okay. And uh, many a times, it is very, surgeon can visualize sometimes, most of the times, 
but those assistants uh, who are assisting you or fellows who are seeing you it is not every time possible for them to visualize and appreciate it because they also have to learn and they also should know what the surgeon is doing so we did one modification yes. how did, did we see it, it? is laparoscopy um, laparoscope we use with monitor, with monitor. Leproscope, camera, camera and the monitor. And monitor. So we tell one person to wear gloves and show us because here also you cannot take two assistants because you have to retract, to retract with three the retractors that needs people. So one extra hand you need to show you with the leproscopic camera in the monitor. monitor. So we feel that it is a beautiful method even for surgeon to be sure that where you are putting your uh, suture, it is very important to visualize and see it. And assistance it's very important because otherwise there is no other way you can show what you are doing. Okay. Then we have visualized we the visualized spinal 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 ligament. Now, mm -hmm. uh, now we have to use this very important instrument for this sacrospinous fixation is scorpion. Mm -hmm. uh, this will come out of wave like this in a pack, and then we have to um, just show. Ah, you can open it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So till Nubila is opening, I'll tell you. So you just have to, our aim is to take two bites from sacrospinous ligament which later will be sutured to the vault. Okay. So usually what we can do, we can use a needle, long needle holder to take a bite. Then sometime initially in very beginning of my um, uh, career, I have also used uh, these things, Shirokas needles, which are half curved needles. And um, uh, so for some years I am using this scorpion now. So why I left using, I tried using long needle holders which come with leproscopy set also because they are quite long and they go inside. First thing I understand that it is very difficult to take a normal needle with that kind of curve inside. Okay, it's extremely difficult. And when you are holding it with some instrument, when you are putting your needle holder, you have to hold it. In doing so much uh, holding it, putting that needle holder that will slip sometimes and you have to pull out that suture from there. So all these tissue, what it was doing that it was damaging the sacrospinous ligament. So some women will have nice sacrospinous ligament but I felt that some old women where the fall prolapse is much more commonly seen. The ligaments is very, not that strong, it is like uh, very, uh, very delicate, I cannot say, but thin and atrophic. In that you just you should be able to, if you are damaging that ligament, then you are not serving your purpose first thing. You have to uh, maintain the strength of that ligament, whatever you have it. The second thing, when you are manipulating with too many instruments, just there are pin structures. So those pin structures, because they roll over, they pass over the skin spines. So they are also, so when you are using too many instruments there, there is a lot of juggling there. So you might damage the pin structures which might later on cause, that time it can cause bleeding, later on it might cause bleeding with neurochia. So since we have started using this instrument, I'll tell you uh, there are certain instruments which are specifically meant for sacrospinous fixation. One such instrument is commonly used which I saw in Europe is KPU. That device also is there but here I found I could not get that instrument. So we started borrowing one instrument from the Department of Orthopedics. They use it to fix some ligaments in knee and shoulder. So we thought why not we can use because it was very effective. I will show you how this, this is a Scorpion and it is from Arthrex company. So um, today morning actually during discussion, um, I came to know that actually Smith and Nephew has come up with this kind of disposable device also. Disposable. Uh, yeah, disposable, but we can use it for as we use it for six to eight patients we can use. So we'll try getting them. This is a very good device. Nridula will tell you how it works. All yours. It has a small aperture here for holding the thread. So when you put, when you put the thread here, is this bigger thread okay so it this scorpion specifically can accommodate only number one zero and two one zero, zero suture material any suture material which is number one zero or two and you don't have to do anything with the needle here you have to take the tail end of the suture okay we take always the suture with needle because this needle will be used to fix the vagina okay so this tail end we have to leave a little bit two inches around we have to leave and then you have uh, one person has to hold the instrument and there is a slit in the lower part of this. So you have to just fix it 
with the stress tip. Okay, so the suture remains fixed here. Then what you have to do, you have certain needles here. It's, it doesn't have anything. Huh? So there are needles of different sizes here. And you have to just pick up one needle. And then you have to put it from here. There is a slot. There is a slot here and a bar here. So it should fix in this one. Then you have to put it in the slot. That, that should lock. Okay, now it is locked now. Hmm. Then what do we do? Then we have to go to, have to some go to tissue. tissue. Huh. So I'll give you some tissue, suppose. So suppose this is a tissue. Okay. So how do you, you know, you take it under take the guidance. It. You are seeing in the monitor and you are taking it inside. inside. And then this is the sacrospinous ligament. You fix it. The tissue. And then lock it. Needle should come up. Yes. You see the needle is coming up. Then you release it. Release and pull it. Pull it, pull it, pull it. It comes out. So it nicely has fixed it here. And if it is attached with needle, or you can, if it, there is no needle, you can use Mayo's needle also. Usually we use the needle suture, which we can like this. See how nicely it has taken a bite from the ligament. Okay. So we'll keep it here. We'll show you again. We'll demonstrate it. We'll level demonstrate it in the model also. Okay. So once you take bite under the guidance of plectroscope, how many? Where, where should you take this bite? Uh, from the uh, ischial spine, two centimeter medial to the ischial yes. spine. First bite we have to take, uh -huh. and then uh, after coming out, we have to uh, keep the reload it again. Reload it again, and then uh, one centimeter medial to the first uh, bite, we have to take one more bite. So, Mridula, is it important that you know that which is a lateral bite, which is a needle bite? Is it yes, important? it is important uh, uh, because when tightening, uh, uh, when we are tightening the uh, fixation, like yeah. at, the, at the end. So, this suture you have to take from the vaginal vault. Vaginal vault. Okay. Yes. Then it should not be crisscrossed. Criss you should not take the lateral suture, lateral, lateral suture, suture, to the medial side of vagina and needle. Then they will be all crisscrossed and the anatomy will not be good. Okay. So you have to take the lateral suture to the lateral side of the wall, medial suture to the medial exactly. side of the wall. Then, then you take the bite. So what are the ways that you remember? Because after that, if maybe you are doing hysterectomy after that, or you are doing repairs after that. So how to identify data? How would you identify? Can you do something? Uh, yes, ma'am. We can use uh, different kind of arteries. Uh, for <laughs> okay. Different kind of arteries. One you can hold with straight, straight artery. artery. One you can, you can hold with curved artery so you can identify. Anything else? We do it. What suture material? Yes, use? yes. We use uh, those so two different two kinds different of suture colors. So usually we use one suture material PDS, PDS and the other is white. Both are both are uh, absorbable. absorbable sutures. You can also use non-absorbable suture if you do not have proline. You can use, but the only thing that when you are tying it, that time it should be buried inside the tissue. It should not be lying open in the vagina because it will. It is a non-absorbable suture. It will remain throughout her life in the vagina, and it is a source of unnecessary infection. By uh, this vitral will dissolve in six to eight weeks, and even PDS will get absorbed in around six months. Six months. PDS will very delay absorbable suture. Okay. So these are the two suture materials we use. Now you have taken a bite and you have put one artery, straight artery, you have no. Straight artery, all of you know how straight artery looks and how uh, the other artery looks, curved artery, you have tagged it with the tray. Now what do you do after that? After that we will uh, continue with our uh, procedure. procedure, like any other cystocele repair is there, we can continue with that, finish that off and then while closing the um, vaginal uh, opening, that time we have to fix uh, the sutures to the medial and lateral as ma'am said, uh, lateral uh, suture to the lateral side huh. and medial suture what to the medial side. Where you have to fix it? Mm -hmm. To the vaginal vault. vault. Apex of the vault. And how do you know where is the vault? Because we have put identification yeah. sutures in the start, we will know that. And yes. we have to fix it laterally and medially uh, accordingly. So, uh, how do you fix? Fix means you take the needle in, hold it with needle holder and take a bite. Right. Okay, if it is an absorbable suture, even through and through by it is okay. But if it is a delayed, if it is a non-absorbable suture, you have to bury it inside. Not. You have to take the suture only in the sub-epithelial tissue. It should not come out of the epithelium. 
सकते हैं सो वी टेक टू सूचर्स देयर डू यू टाइप इन हियर नाउ नो सो व्हाई यू डू नॉट टाइप इन हियर बिकॉज़ वॉल्ट हैज टू गो इनसाइड सो वी नीड सो व्हेन वॉल्ट गोस इनसाइड आफ्टर दैट यू कैन नॉट वी कैन नॉट Uh, once it goes inside, we cannot uh, approach that again. It okay. is very difficult. So that's why we have to do it differently. Like we have to start closing from above and below at the same time, and then we have to finally. Uh, then you can finally tie. tie so it is now you have covered the vagina. You have, but it is still hanging there. Yes. And then you tie with suture. You will tie them. Uh, these two sutures these which you have kept. And when you put the knot, this goes totally okay. towards the sacrum. sacrum. goes very high it's i always tell that when you put the knot it is a magical feeling that how when you tie the it has a pulley action so entire vagina is taken towards the sacral spinal fluid okay. that's a simple procedure vaginal closure if vagina is very tough you can do it with that and number one suture material also i usually prefer to use 20 to close the vagina because it is already hanging outside for long time it is fragile tissue So two zero suture material is what we use usually. usually. Right. Okay. So what Mirbala was trying to say that we start two, we start one suture from above. We can continuously also do if the suture reaches there. Or what we do usually we start one suture from above, one suture from below, overlap them and tie them. Right. So we have one vaginal vault right. ready for us, and then. Then you have to take these two sutures and then tighten them mm -hmm. so that the vault goes inside to the sacral spine. And the space. trick is that you have to put a knot and you have to push, push it inside. inside wherever it goes. Okay, so it's beautiful that if it gets deviated to the right side, but it goes up very nice. Okay, so this is the entire procedure. So I'll just revise uh, what all uh, she has got with uh, some OT. We'll see. You have kept one saline bottle. What where do we use it? Because saline, uh, we use uh, mm, for dilution of the yeah, air. Yeah, right. So it is a normal like saline bottle. You can take it 200 ml of this and mix one ml. That is your solution. Not only for the sacral spines, but for the general surgery you are doing, it is. And you can use it. Can we use anything else? You can, can use not vaso vaso pressin also. The good thing about vaso pressin is the effect is much longer. But a um, uh, little negative thing is that uh, when you press, uh, uh, when you push vasopressin inside, then all the tissues become bland. Okay, so it is sometimes I felt that it was very difficult to differentiate the pains. But uh, I now I want to use again in some of the patients, and I'll tell you how it feels. That was long time ago. I was trying, then I felt that adrenaline, though it is short lasting, but the, it doesn't. Hamper that much tissue pains as does vasopressin. And vasopressin, you remember, we use mostly for myomectomies and other. It's a very good vasoconstrictor, long acting, but somehow vaginal tissue it loses the identification of vaginal tissue. Everything looks same, so the pains are a little difficult to go yeah. into identify. Okay, so but that is saline. Then second thing you have written. Why do we want suction here? A suction when we uh, open the pararectal area. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever uh, blood is there we have to suck that yes. so that uh, we can see clearly clear. clear and the planes are clear and also to um, clean, clean the fat, the fat. Yes. yes clean the fat yeah. from that so that the visualization again of sacral spine yeah. it's like a blend dissection right. kind of thing very beautiful instrument of suction is working nice how i feel the job is done okay then you have uh, kept what is that copy we have uh -huh. That, that is for uh, incising the uh, vaginal mm -hmm. vagina, starting mm -hmm. incision. And if there are some pinpoint bleeders, yes, yes. usually if the pararectal space starts bleeding, it is usually a venous ooze, and most of the times it is very difficult to control it. So you should just ignore that that point of time. Do your job. Close the vaginal vault. Push it up, and then pack it. Pack it. You pack it for six to eight hours. The bleeding would hundred percent stop. You cannot find a source. It is a venous ooze, so don't get bothered with that venous ooze. Yes. Okay. Then what is there? So in this packet there are needles. We have already shown you. Just show how this needle looks like. This needle mm -hmm. looks like this. Mm -hmm. It has a curved end, curved end because it has to come out. Okay. And there is a slot, slot, just so that we know that we have fixed it properly in this bar mm -hmm. of the instrument. Okay. Then this two zero two zero white print. 
uh, we use for closing of vagina and we also use for uh, fixing uh, the sacrospinous. Uh, so ligament. it is either with this instrument. Mm -hmm. If you are using the needle holder, you can use whatever you want. But with this instrument specifically, there are instructions that you can use only two zero or one zero. zero. Okay. Then these alices you have kept. What do you do with these alice forceps? Alice forceps. We first uh, hold the vaginal wall. Which which part can you repeat it again to approach sacrospinous ligament of erector space? We have to open middle one middle third. one third of which are very good. Then adrenaline we have already told. What is this? Right angle. Huh. Where do we use uh, it? Right angle after we open the pararectal space, uh, sacrospinous ligament, when we visualize it, there are few fibers. Uh -huh. So just to uh, remove those fibers, fibers and see yes. clearly, uh, so that we can see clearly the sacrospinous right. ligament. Yes, perfectly you said that this is also used for dissection long. It helps a lot. Okay, the other thing where I love to use it is, I told you that upper part of coccygeus muscle is sacrospinous ligament and some patient that is very nicely seen actually we should try to and separate that ligament from the muscle so that the bite when it comes it is only through nice chunk of ligament, ligament you have taken so i use mostly to separate the coccygeus muscle with sacrospinous ligament it's very good then what is this uh, this is just uh, dutch for okay. and you need obviously to close the vagina, vagina. you need another forceps you can use this one also. This one, yeah. when we got this? Uh, peanut, when we use peanut, to remove the uh, fat, fat or from the dissections. Fat. Okay, again to visualize. Everything is visualization and putting the suture. Then sacrospinous is another. And this, uh, long these plates. are long plated. How many root capsules we need? Three. 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 Okay. So I think these are the only instruments we need for sacrospinous fixation. Now we'll try to demonstrate, I will try to demonstrate this procedure in this uh, model. And let's see, I think for sacrospinous, this is a beautiful model to learn because when you see, when I tell assistants also to see and feel, it's not that easy. But this is exactly like I can tell you that this feeling is exactly like human. What do you feel in a patient? You feel here because it is made so beautifully, it feels that skin. So, Mridula will do the entire procedure in this dummy and show us. Okay. Yeah. Imagine that the patient is uh, lying down in a lithotomy position and she is anesthetized. Oh. After painting and draping the area, we have to put our two fingers to feel for the ischial spine. So we have to put these two fingers in this angle to feel for the right sided ischial spine. And I can really feel the ischial spine uh, here. And then uh, we can feel it in the 8 o'clock position, we can feel for the ischial spine. After feeling for the ischial spine, then we have to just open this. I'm going to remove the vulva and show you. This is the ischial spine where we can feel it. So through the vagina, I can feel the ischial spine, and then we have to sweep our finger through the medial side to feel for the uh, sacrospinous ligament. Now we remove the vagina to see the sacrospinous ligament. This is the sacrospinous ligament which we can nicely see here in this model. So uh, what we do is first we have to feel for the ischial spine and then medial medially 2 cm medial to the ischial spine we have to take our first bite. So for that I will just uh, show you how to do that. Yes, we have to load the thread and then we have to go from the through the vagina to the pararectal space and then 2 cm medial to the uh, ischial spine. Yeah, we can see the needle now, it comes out and then leave it, pull the thread. And then remove the needle and again the same thing we'll do one centimeters medial to the initial bite we take the uh, second bite so now one centimeter medial to the first bite we again close up Yes. We can see the needle now and then 
open it and then pull the thread and then we, we have to leave these and we have to hold them with artery forcep to our drapes separately we have to hold them lateral one laterally and medial one medially and then we have to finish our uh, cystocele repair or rectocele repair and then before closing the vagina uh, we have to close vagina and then fix while closing the vagina we have to fix them uh, to the uh, vaginal wall now i am replacing the vagina back so that i will explain you so this is the uh, vaginal apex and the threads will be uh, coming from here and so as we already cut the tissue uh, we have to fix these threads to the vaginal apex we, before we have put one identification sutures for uh, for identifying the apex clearly then we have to uh, close the apex and then uh, first we have to bury them and then close the apex and then we have to uh, tie these two threads and then pull inside so that uh, the vagina goes deep inside and it gets fixed to the sacrospinous ligament. So you saw how beautifully uh, Mudal explained the procedure entirely in the model and I think it's very easy to show here. Important thing, the sacrospinous ligament, it is very difficult to imagine. Okay, so this model helps you to see how the alignment of sacrospinous ligament, you take it up? Yes. Sacrospinous ligament, yes. I think this is the most important part that you can see that how the in dorsal position, this is more or less straight, the sacrospinous, it arises from the ischial spine, it gets inserted at the sacrum. So you have to take around two centimeters, she has taken beautiful two bites, I hope you can see it, one lateral bite and one uh, medial bite which we will later fix with the vaginal ball and then push the vagina inside. So it's a beautiful, if done properly, it is just 10 to 15 minutes job. What do you need to do it nicely? Tell me mm -hmm. one. One thing which you need to do this procedure nicely. Good assistant. Very good. <laughs> good assistant who can retract the space nicely because vision is the thing which is important. And the second important thing, you need some instrument which can do this work fast, correctly and without damaging the tissue. When you are using needle holders, taking out the needle, it is actually damaging the tissue because you have to go deep. Half the time you are not seen because of cluttering of instruments. So this kind of instrument is very helpful in our practice. Mm -hmm. So we have actually posted some two or three videos of sacrospinous prophylactic as well as therapeutic suspension before you can go and watch those videos also. I hope you understood the procedure, the tips and tricks and this is one procedure where assistance are very important. So I hope this video was useful and if you have any doubts, please post your comments below. We'll try to sort it out. Thank you so much.